All right, so today we're going to look at solving systems again. We're not actually going to solve systems today, but we're going to take a step towards solving systems using matrices and um, row echelon forms. So first, we're going to start off with this system of two equations. We have two equations, two unknowns, and we're going to talk about this thing called the augmented matrix as a way of representing this system. So the numbers in our matrix come from the coefficients on x and y, and we're assuming there would be a plus in front. So this minus y turns into a negative 1 in our matrix. And then the equal sign are replaced by this vertical bar. And then our solutions, or our y value, or not really y values, but our answers are over here on the right of the vertical bar. And so this matrix at the bottom, the 1, 2, 4, negative 1, with the vertical bar in the 113 represents this system of two equations in two unknowns, and it's called an augmented matrix. Now, why don't you stop the video right here, and let's see if you can write this augmented matrix for this system right here. Well, hopefully you're back. We can check. This is a little more complicated. It's a system of three equations and three unknowns. We will have our equal sign, and we just take our coefficients. And the first one is 3, and then negative 2, and 2, and our solution is 6. And then we'd have 7, and negative 3, and 2, and our solution is negative 1. And finally, we have 2, negative 3, and 4 and our result would be zero. And so that's what you should have gotten for your augmented matrix for this system. Um, let's try another one that's a little bit more complicated. So similarly to when we were doing synthetic division, um, and we're representing numbers with variables, so terms, by simply their coefficient, we have to take care that if there is no term in a spot where there should be a term, we need to enter a coefficient of 0 to represent that term. And we have to have our place. So as we're going, this column represents the coefficients for the x. This column represents the coefficients for the y. This column represents the coefficients for the z. And this is our numeric sort of solution or our, our result. So as we look at this, this is a little trickier. If you want a challenge, you should pause the video and try it on your own. So if you're back, um, our x column is fairly easy. We have a 3 and a 1 and a 1. Our y column is a little trickier. In uh, the very first, the top equation, we have a negative 1, and there is no y term in the next equation. So that's going to have a 0 in its spot. And then we have 2y in the bottom equation. If you look at your z's, there is 1z in the top equation. There is 1z in the middle equation. And there are zero z's in the last equation. Now, hopefully you could get this. The trickiest part is that all of our number solutions must be over here on this left. So in order to do that, we really would add one. So we have this minus one here. We're going to add one to both sides, because that gets rid of this. And that's going to put a one here. There is a zero still on the top, because there was no other constant. And down here, we're going to add eight to both sides, because that makes no numbers to the left of the equal. And all our numbers should be on the right of the equal side. And that's going to give us an 8 right there. So you may say, well, why are we doing this? This seems rather pointless. Well, we are going to create this matrix, and then we're going to try eventually to solve it using the matrix by using these row operations on a matrix. And these are very similar to the same things you can do with a system of equations. So one. Um, valid row operation is to interchange any two rows, which is basically just putting one equation above another, which doesn't change our system at all. Uh, the next row operation is to replace a row by a non-zero multiple of that row. So for example, right here, if I think about this row right here, I could replace that row by any multiple of that row. And I would just multiply each term by a number. So let's say I wanted to replace this by three times the row. So this row could become 3, 0, 3, and then I'd have my bar, and I'd have 3. And I could do anything. I could do 2. I could do 5. If I did 
the bottom row I could multiply, say, by 3. That row would become 3, um, 6, 0, and the bar, and then 24. And you can always replace a row by a multiple of itself. And you multiply every term in that row by that constant. Um, finally, our third one is you can replace a row by the sum of that row and a constant non-zero multiple of some other row. And this is similar to what we do in our solving of systems. Um, let's take a look at uh, this right here. So we are going to say what row operations can we do so that the entry in row 2, column 1, so that's this entry right here, I would like this to be a 0. And so we're going to introduce a little notation. This right here is what we are going to replace row 2 with. And so I'm going to have, I'm going to add some multiple of a different row, which in this case there's only one other option, that's row 1. So I'm going to multiply row 1 by a number and add it to row 2, and hopefully I will end up with a 0 here. And pause the, the tape for a minute or the video and see if you can think of what number I would do. And this is very similar to when we're doing substitutions or s elimination. So if I want to add my top and my bottom row or a multiple of my top row, I came up with negative 4. Because if I multiply my top row by negative 4, right, I would get negative 4, negative 8, negative 4. And when I add that to row 2, which is 4, negative 1, 13, my negative 4 and my 4 give me 0, which is what I wanted. My negative 8 and my negative 1 is negative 9, and my negative 4 and my 13 is 9. And that means that I can represent my system as 1, 2, with my bar 1, and then 0, negative 9, 9. That is an equivalent representation. It's an equivalent system. The solutions for this system will be the same as the solutions for the original system. Okay, and why are we trying to do this? Well, one way to help us solve a system using matrices is to get our system, our matrix representing our system, in what's called row echelon form. Row echelon form has the entry in row 1, column 1, is a 1. And then all numbers below it are 0. So if we look at our system right here that we just created, row 1, column 1, right there, is a 1, and everything below it is a 0. So right now I, I have the first condition of row echelon form. Um, condition 2 says, the, whoops, the first non-zero entry in, uh, that's not what I wanted, here we go. The first non-zero entry in each row after the first row is a 1. Only zeros appear below it, and the 1 appears to the right of the first non-zero entry in any row that is above. Okay, so um, if we look here at our solution, the next row should have a 1 as its first non-zero entry, which would be this one right here. So we are not yet in row echelon form. Um, but that's what you'd need. I'd need that to be a 1, and anything below that would be a 0. And our last condition is that any rows that contain all zeros to the left of the vertical bar appear at the bottom. Okay. So this seems sort of confusing, but basically our theme is that we have a 1 here, and then we can have any numbers we want, and this, this could be as big of a matrix as you want. And then we would have all zeros below it, so we'd have all zeros below it. Then the next is going to have a 1, and this might have some numbers in it, but then anything below that one would be a zero, and so forth. And then the next row could have a zero here and a one here, but more likely what we generally get is this one. Oops, and this could be any number, but below the one would be a zero, and that's sort of our idea, and we get some one, or something like that. That's row echelon form. So here are a few examples. Um, I want you to pause the video, take a minute, and see if you can decide which ones are in row echelon form. So hopefully you're back. And if we see this right here, A 
is in row echelon form. Here's a one, it has zeros below it. The next row, the, the one is to the right, and then there's, nothing, there's no other rows below it, so that works. This one over here is not in row echelon form not in row echelon form because the zero is above the one not below. Um, we if we switch our rows and did one negative one two remember that's a valid row operation we still would not be in row echelon form because while I have the one on top and the zero below it for the first row then right here I am not starting with a one so that one's not in row echelon form. C is starts off looking good. Here's a one, a zero, a zero below it, and then the one is over here. So we have this sort of diagonal thing happening. However, below it is not a zero, so that is not in row echelon form. But yes, D is in row echelon form. We have our one and all zeros below it, and this one is over to the right and all zeros below it, and then right here. And that's going to be an important form for when we try to solve systems. All right. All right. So right now I'm going to go back to this um, matrix we came up with here, and I'm going to try to put it in row echelon form. We said it's not quite in row echelon form. What I would need is for there to be a one right there, and I'm trying to think of a row operation that would give me a one right there. And what I can come up with is I'm going to replace row two with negative one-ninth of little row two. Row two is the original row two. That is a row operation I can do. I multiply any row by a constant and if I do that my new row two becomes zero times one-ninth and then I have negative nine times negative one-ninth and nine times negative one-ninth and what I get for my new row two is zero one, negative one. And so I can write my augmented matrix, which is equivalent, will give me the same solutions as zero, one, negative one, and now I am in row echelon form. Okay, we're going to try one more. So here's a little more complicated one, a system of three equations, three unknowns. So your first step is to write the system as an augmented matrix. So I want you to pause the video and try and do that. So you should have, as your augmented matrix, a 2, a 2. You need a 0 to hold the place for the fact that there's no z's in the first equation. And then a 6. My second row is 1, 1, 1, 1. My third row is 3, 4, negative 1, 13. So hopefully you came up with that. That's step 1. Now we have a matrix to represent our system. Um, we're going to use row operations to put this in row echelon form. Okay, so let's look at ways to do this. And there are multiple ways to get it in row echelon form. Different people will do different ways. And when you're done, you may even have a slightly different matrix. However, the solution should always be the same. And we'll get into solutions in our next video, in our next lesson. So one way to do this, one good first step, is if there is a row that has a one at the very beginning, we can put that at the top which is usually a good idea because then I don't have to do anything with that. So, And I can switch rows. That is a legal step. You can switch the order that you write any rows. So there's a good first step. Now, I need to do some sort of operation. And again, you are thinking of, I want to replace this row right here, row 2, so that there is a 1 right or a 0 right there instead of a to. And I want to use other rows to do it. And if I, my new row 2, if I multiply my first row by negative 2 and I add it to row 2, I believe that is going to get me a second row that begins with a 0. And that is one of the things that I want. So let's try that. So um, negative 2 times row 1 would be... Uh, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 12. And if I add that to row 2, which is 2, 2, 0, 6, I'm going to end up with 0, 0, negative 2, uh, 
negative 6. And so I can replace row 2 with that new row. And I get 1, 1, 1, 6. And then I have 0, 0, negative 2, negative 6. And I have 3, 4, negative 1, 13. Uh, let's try something similar. And actually, since this has two zeros, I think I want to move that one to the very bottom. And I'm going to try and do something to this row, to row 3. And again, I'm going to use my very first row again. So if I replace row 3 with negative 3 times row 1, and then I add that to my current row 3, I think I'll have a 0 in my first spot. Because negative 3 times row 1 would be negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, negative 18. I'm going to add that to row 3, which is 3, 4, negative 1, 13. And when I add, I get a 0, and I get a 1, and I get a negative 4, and I get a negative 5. So I can replace this. I still have my 1, 1, 1, 6. I have 0, 0, negative 2, negative 6, and now I have 0, 1, negative 4, negative 5. And as I said, I want my diagonals sort of to have my 1s. So if I switch row 2 and row 3, 1, 1, 1, 6, 0, 1, negative 4, negative 5, that's looking good. And then I have 0, 0, negative 2, negative 6. And now I'm very close. My first row, or my first column, has a 1 on top and all zeros below. My second column has a 1. So second row, second column has a 1, and everything below it is a 0. I need this number right here to be a 1. And since there's no other terms, I can use my um, multiplying by a constant. What constant should I multiply by to get a positive 1 here? If I take what's now my row 3, and I multiply by negative 1 half, that should do it. And so my final answer will be 1, 1, 1, 6, 0, 1, negative 4, negative 5, 0, 0, 1. So when I multiply negative 2 by negative 1 half, I get 1. And negative 6 times negative 1 half is going to give me 3. There's my augmented matrix in row echelon form. In our next video, we'll talk with how can I use that to help me solve my system.